Welcome, everybody. Just wanted to say thank you for joining Steve and I for the profit formula, separate your fees from time. What I was going to say just right off the bat is that if you are charging by the hour, the session, or the project, then I just want to let you know there's other ways to be able to get paid for your work mm -hmm. that really highlight your expertise as opposed to trading your um, trading dollars for hours. If you are an entrepreneur and you really are coming from the place of making a difference for your clients, you know the transformation that you offer, what's possible once they work with you, and you really want your fees to reflect that. Possibly you've been thinking about making more money this year. However, you realize that in order to make more, you have to work more hours and you really value your personal time and other aspects of your life too. You don't want to have to sacrifice those other things in order to earn more income. And it's putting you at a crossroads or maybe you've been thinking about raising your rates, but the thought of doing that brings up some worries, some concerns that you're gonna lose clients that are working with you because they can't afford your new rates or you won't be able to bring on new clients. If any of those things are top of mind for you, then you are absolutely in the right place. One of the things that I talk frequently about is my education and the education of the clients that I closely work with. I know for a fact that it's trained me to be able to do that thing that I do so well, which is helping people achieve their full potential, to be able to get out of their own way and actually do the things that they want to do and they believe that they ought to be doing, to just step up and play a bigger game. However, the other thing is about my education is that it prepared me to be working for someone else as an employee, as opposed to being a business owner and an employer and an, and an entrepreneur. Because of that, when I got out of college and I was looking to have my own practice, there were certain things that I just didn't know about owning and operating a business, especially one that was gonna be profitable without having to sacrifice my personal time and efforts. What I had to do at that point was, even though I had some student loan debt, I had to reinvest once again and figure out how to price my services, how to enroll clients, especially because I wasn't looking to be salesy. salesy. Salesmanship wasn't my thing. That isn't what I was looking to do or found comfortable. So how to be able to enroll new clients without being salesy. And the third thing I had to figure out is how to network. How do I let people even know what I have to offer or how I might be able to help them or connect with other people who might be great referral partners with me? So my education prepared me really well for that thing that I do, working for somebody else, but not being a business owner. And I am proud to say that from 2018, this is the third year in, the, in a row now, I have been listed among the top 22 business coaches globally by HubSpot. Uh, quite an honor, unexpected, and really happy that I've been able to maintain my name on that list. Uh, also, I've written a book called The Success Solution. Being able to understand the mindset as well as the strategy and tactical steps for having a business that works for you as opposed to you being a slave to your business. So those are some of the things that I feel are really about what we're going to offer today is how to be able to separate your fees and time. But before we really dig in any further, uh, Steve, please take a moment to introduce yourself. Oh, absolutely. It's such a pleasure uh, to be here. So my name is Steve Fogelman. Uh, some people know me as Lauren's husband, but I used to have an identity at one point. Um, and I do, the, I do a monthly leadership seminar to our mastermind group. And if you want to be a part of that, you need to join our mastermind. Uh, but anyway, I'm really excited and I'm ready to go. Excellent. Thank you, Steve. And you want to go ahead and give an idea of what we're covering? Absolutely. So what, what, what you're going to learn today is you're going to look at the number one pricing mistake. Um, I, you need to actually go over the second one because it's kind of a little blocked on my screen. And then the last one we're going to look at is five steps to value pricing.
So what oh, was the second one? It's uh, value, price, or services is the second part. And okay, so then, value, price, or services, and mm -hmm. then five steps to value pricing. And Lauren is also going to talk with you guys about how to deal with objections, because I know that that's a huge, a huge, huge thing. A a absolutely. Um, we're throwing it in there because we know that it's so important and valuable. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, with, with, it is. With that being said, we are going to give you as much as we can possibly give you during our time here together. If you buy your computer, that's great because maybe about uh, two thirds of the way through, I'm going to share a link on another page for you to go to that has some uh, additional information on it. But if you're here, we're going to give as much as we can. If you're looking at how to be able to learn more or take this to the next level, we will share that during our time today as well. Mm -hmm. And I know that um, most people are using the billable hour and we're going to really kind of destroy all of those myths about that. So why shift away from the billable hour, Lauren, if everybody is doing it? Uh, the, 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 ma the main reason why is because it commoditizes your service as opposed to highlights your expertise. What, what that means is that when you are charging by the hour, people in their brains need to compare you to something else or someone else that might be able to help fix their problem. When you're charging by the hour, they're gonna compare you to someone else that might offer the same strategies, uh, do some similar services, and they're gonna compare your services as well as your rates to what you're offering. And in this way, it really puts you in a competitive mode. And that's not where most entrepreneurs that I know really wanna be. They're not that highly competitive. They're really more service oriented. So I don't want you to be positioned as a cost. I want you to be seen as an investment. And that means moving away from the billable hour. The other part of it is that pricing is actually highly, highly subjective. Now, when I talk about that, we're looking at value from our point of view of what we have to deliver. And we know the change that we can help someone with and what the impact is once they solve that thing or achieve that result. But very rarely do we actually look at it from the point of view of our clients. And what you really want to do is shift your perception and think about it. What about from the client's perspective? Where is your value? And part of your value low, um, goes into, and we'll get it more into this later, really understanding their wants, their needs, and their desires. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so um, shifting away from the billable hour really, really sounds appealing. But what starts to separate the fees from the time? There's actually just one thing that really starts to move entrepreneurs into this direction of separating fees from times. And actually this one thing is the thing that all highly successful entrepreneurs really excel with. And that is understanding the concept of value. Mm. If you connect with your business with value, you are consider what I consider a value-based business, then it is really focusing on what's in the best interest of the clients instead of what's in your best interest. And there's three different parts to the value component. The first thing is you need to connect with your own value, your own self-worth. Mm. If you want other people to recognize the value that you have to offer, then you first have to really believe in the value of what you're offering those clients. So when you connect with your own value, then other people are going to see it a lot more clearly. It'll really come through and show up. Self-confidence, self-worth is a huge factor in mm -hmm. how you uh, set up your business, how you promote your business, how you get out there. It, it affects every single factor of operating and running your business. I firmly believe as a sports psychologist term business coach, that success happens from the inside out. What you believe, what you value, what your thoughts are about what you bring to the table, they all impact what you choose to do and what you choose not to do. And, and that's why self-confidence and, and personal value is the very first part of the value factor. 
The second part is about value pricing. This is when you start to separate your fees from time and you price your services according to the value that you deliver to your clients as opposed to how much time it takes. When we think about that, the highest value that you have that you can offer your clients is what you know. It's your expertise. It's right up here in your head as opposed to what you do. Now we value as practitioners what we do because we spend so much time, effort, and energy studying those things and learning those techniques. But your clients, mm -hmm. they just want fast results and be able right. to trust that you can deliver on your promise. So when we start to really focus on the value of what you deliver, then we can start to price your, client, your services according to value as opposed to uh, doing the billable hour. And mm -hmm. the third part of it, a really, really difficult part, it was for me and it is a learning curve for most of the entrepreneurs that I know is having a value conversation because most of us don't want to sell. We don't want to have to sell someone into working with us. We want them to naturally want to take that step forward. When you meet with a potential client and you have what I call value conversation, then that value conversation naturally has them start to recognize that they can trust you and that you're going to be able to deliver on what you have to offer because you're asking great questions. And from that connection, if they're an ideal client, they will actually naturally ask you, how does this work? Mm -hmm. With having that value conversation in place, you never ever have to feel salesy, have to pitch your services and convince someone to working with you. It is just a natural progression. And like I said, when it's a fit and they see that you can really help them with fixing this problem, they're just going to naturally want to know more. And it just then becomes a natural extension of the conversation, being able to share how they can get started and how you work with people. Mm -hmm. And I know that the, the, the slide basically says that value is subjective, but value is sometimes really difficult to describe, and especially when it comes to pricing. How do you explain the relationship between value and price, and, and how do you get people to understand that? As you said, Steve, value is highly, highly subjective because what I value isn't always the same as what you're going to value or anybody else on this call. We're all going to have a different perception about what we order emphasize as a value and what's not as important to us. Mm -hmm. And I want to be able to maybe get us all on the same page by talking about this cup of water. Now, if I'm speaking at a conference, you're in my breakout, you're thirsty, and I have several cups of water like this at the back of the table, at the back of the room, you might pay one, maybe $2 to be able to quench your thirst and then go back and listen to me do the rest of my presentation. However, if you're walking in the hot, dry desert, You've been walking eight days. It's, it is sweltering heat. You can feel life force just slowly, slowly draining out of you. You're not sure that when you crest the next sand dune, if you'll continue seeing another more seas of a sea of sand, or if you're going to see maybe mm. the lights of your way out. And I magically appear with the same cup of water. Nothing's changed as far as the packaging or the ounces. And I tell you, not only do I have this water, but I have the map on the way out and I'm gonna take you out of this desert. Mm -hmm. Now, how much do you think you'd be willing to pay now? And if anybody's here by their computer, please put a price in the chat. How much would this mm -hmm. cup of water, with the knowing that I'm gonna take you out of the desert and I'm gonna give you the map so that if you ever find your way in the desert again, you have the map to get yourself out of the desert next time around. How much would that water, that same cup of water be worth to you now? Would love to see what you put in the chat. Yep. So what would you pay for the water and also the maps, which is a little bonus. <laughs> all I had, $500. All, all I had. Uh, okay. $500. F $500. Okay. All I had. Great. So now this 
cup of water that was maybe a dollar or two in the back of the room at a conference, but now I'm connecting with you and you are in the desert and you're willing to pay $500. It's not that the water, the packaging, the contents has changed. What's changed is your needs, your wants, and your desires. You need to have water within 72 hours in order to continue living. You can't go any longer than 72 hours without water mm -hmm. or you will be likely to die. That, that's the first thing, is that you just need it for survival. You want to quench this dry, scratchy feeling that's this parched throat that you have and, and to be able to re relieve yourself of that discomfort of just literally dying from thirst. And then you desire to find your way out of this endless sea of sand so that you can continue living. And because I can offer you those things, you want to take some that normally would be a dollar and now pay me $500, even though nothing else changed except for your needs, your wants, and your desires. And mm. consider that when you're connecting with your clients is you want to tap into what their needs, their wants, and their desires are. And if they are an ideal client and they are really ready to get out of their desert, they're gonna be more likely to pay you for the value of that solution, of having another day, of being able to now move forward and grow in the transformation that you have to offer to get out of where they currently are. They're gonna pay more for that because that's connected to something that is very, very deeply personal to them. Even if you are selling a service that is a business, business related, this is still something that a solution that is very personal to them for some reason, and they're going to pay more than just what an hourly rate would be. So I hope that that starts to get us all on the same page about the value conversation and why you want to leave, lead with value instead of what you do. It is so more, they need to know that you have the map mm -hmm. and the solution to get them out of the desert. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's a great story. That, thank you. And, and this is true. I was just talking with Ingrid. Um, we were working together back in, I believe, oh my gosh, uh, two, about 2009, 2010, we first started working together. She mm -hmm. transitioned out of her home into an office and she was doing what most bookkeepers do. She was working with all different types of clients, a wide, wide variety, trying to be everything to everyone. But Ingrid had this desire inside to really make a difference for her clients. She just wasn't sure exactly how to be able to do that. When we first met, we, um, I talked to her about value pricing. She was very, very fiercely loyal to the billable hour because she wanted to be fair to her clients and thought that pricing the clients meaning maybe giving different rates for different clients, depending on their needs and their circumstances, was unfair to them. Mm -hmm. And she was resistant for a long time to doing this. She then went to an industry conference. She learned from one of the godfathers of value pricing, Ron Baker. She sat in on his session. And she came back saying, okay, I get it. Let's move towards value pricing. And we started to change her business model to really break away from trading time for money into a value-based uh, model where she figured out who her ideal client was. She started to bundle or package her different services together that her clients need. And then we started to price her services according to value instead of how much time it would take. By doing that, she was able to, as you can see, uh, double her business after cutting away 30% of her clients. Her niche was focusing on people that were in the travel adventure tourism industry. So it was mm. very, very specific. She's now speaking on those stages and she is once again increasing her rates, getting well paid. Um, she actually has gotten to the point where she doesn't even do the bookkeeping for them anymore. She does the the consulting. So she moved away from doing the day-to-day -day bookkeeping into really the primary consulting piece. And she's getting paid primarily for her knowledge of helping them build a profitable business by really focusing on the value that they have to offer also. So 
with that, Ingrid's become an industry leader, not only for the travel tourism industry, but also for other bookkeepers, helping them to make that switch into owning what they bring to the table too, so that they can lead with value as opposed to competing on price or with other bookkeepers offering similar services. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So next we're going to look at how you value, value price your services. And uh, Lauren, how do you help your clients transition to this value pricing? Because it seems like that's so important at this point. It, it is really huge. And what I'm going to go into is the value pricing model. The, the very first thing you want to recognize is eventually you've come to a point where you've done enough research. It's time to, do, to stop doing the research and finally get into action. Now, I know with some of the people that I speak with, they are in the research mode or thinking about increasing the rates and making this change in their pricing structure, sometimes for years before they actually do it. I want to encourage you to stop doing the research and start doing it because you're going to learn so much along the way. It, you're going to grow because of it and you're going to earn more money without having to work additional hours. So that's the very first thing. The next part, which is what I did with Ingrid, is we started to figure out who your ideal client is, who it is that you work best with. And it's focusing on not just the demographics, maybe about where they live or looking at how much education they have, what industry they might be in, but it's also looking at what I call the psychographics, which is what are their personality, what's their personality like? What characteristics do they bring to the table? Like, I know that with a lot of my clients, they tend to be very high achievers, have very high standards and expectations for themselves. They don't like making mistakes. Sometimes they know what they want, but they don't know how to get started. And they need a little bit of handholding to be able to move forward in a certain direction. But then once they figured it out, then they're good to go. So those are some of the things that I've seen about my ideal client as far as the qualities and characteristics and I bet that yours ideal clients have certain qualities and characteristics that you work best with too. So that's something to think about. And as you're thinking about your ideal client, you want to think about what are the main benefits that they get from working with you? What is the problem that you help them solve and what's possible once they solve that problem? Uh, an example is that uh, let's go back to my clients. When I help them price their services for value instead of trading dollars by the hour, then what's, ha what's possible for them is that they're feeling more confident about their business and talking about what they have to offer and why their clients ought to be, why someone ought to be working with them. So they really become connected to not just the transformation, but they can then start to articulate what is the steps that they offer that help their clients actually achieve that result. Mm. And by having those insights about their business and the transformation, they just feel more confident and are able to really take a stand for their clients uh, in order to help them make a decision that's in their best interest. The secondary benefits that come from uh, your clients is because you help them achieve this thing or fix that problem, what else is possible? Once again, going back to my clients, once I help them with their pricing, they have better cash flow. This means that they might be able to reinvest in a certain part of their business or maybe in advertising and marketing or get some things off their plate because they can now get help and support where they couldn't make that investment before. Or it's possible because they have a healthier bank account they can now take some time off from their business without it affecting their day-to-day -day operations and it, they're able to stay current with their bills. So those are some of the secondary things that happen because we're able to help them get paid more for that service that they do. The third thing you wanna think about is the hidden cost. What is the cost of someone not working with you and continuing to deal with their problem? Well, I know that the hidden cost with my clients is that they continue trading time for, um, time for money. So if they want to work, they want to earn more, they have to work more. That means that they might have to give up some family time, personal activities, 
maybe they stop going to the gym. And mm. I don't think that you ought to give up those other important things of your life in order to be able to make more money. I, I want you to be able to make more money and be able to have those other important qualities of life uh, available to you and really a part of your life. So those are the things to look mm. at when you're thinking about your ideal clients is the main benefits, the obvious ones, the secondary ones, because you help them fix this problem, what can they do now that they couldn't do before? And then what's the hidden cost of them continuing to struggle with this problem uh, because they didn't choose to work with you? So that's the first step. And then the second thing that I do that starts to separate your fees from time is look at bundling certain types of services together that your clients need and creating packages. By creating packages, it starts to separate your fees from time and you want to look at creating three different types of packages for your clients. I call them the silver, gold, and the diamond package. The silver package is really the one for clients who are price sensitive. They see the value of working with you, but they can't really fully engage with you at the uh, place where they would like to yet. But they do want to get started working with you because they know that you're going to help them move forward and start to solve their problem. So the silver package is really the very basic package of things they need to really start to have that transformation that you offer. The gold package is where most of your clients will opt in. So this, this one really serves the majority of your clients. And it's the services that they need and want to be able to get the transformation that you're going to help them achieve and it has more access to you and because it has more access to you in different ways maybe response time maybe you have more availability as far as consultations or strategy goes but because it's a more robust package it's now um, going to help them move forward at a faster rate and with you doing more things with them than if they had the silver package. And then you have the diamond package, which is for the clients who really just like done for you services. So they really want you to do the majority of the work possibly. They want more access mm -hmm. to you. It might be that they have some specific needs or requests that the majority of your clients don't have and that you want to accommodate them but they don't really fit into your average package and they are going to go ahead and fit into this higher level package. Now, the really beautiful thing about offering packages instead of offering just one option of how to work with you is once again, our brains need to compare things in order to make important decisions. If you offer them simply one option of working with you, then they're comparing you to other service providers that might offer a similar solution. And they're comparing if they wanna work with you or if they wanna possibly work with somebody else. When you offer packages and you explain the three different options to them, then it changes the question a little bit. Now they're thinking about how they wanna work with you and which package is the best fit for them as opposed to if they wanna work with you. This means that more people that you speak with are likely going to enroll in one of your packages and they'll do it based upon the value that you have to offer as opposed to how much time it's going to take. So that's the second part of this is really looking at separating your fees from time by offering packages instead of just one way of working with you. Mm -hmm. After that, you need to know how to have that value conversation. When you're talking with a potential client that's interested in working with you, they understand the types of ways that you work with them, you wanna have a value conversation where you're not pitching them or trying to sell them into your service. This means that you ask great questions. Mm. Your questions are gonna, gonna focus on, on figuring out what are their needs, their wants, and their desires. What's their desert? You know, where are they stuck in the, des mm -hmm. the desert with? And 
by asking great questions, they start to realize that you had the map and the solution to get them out of the desert and quench their thirst. Mm. The other thing that I believe is with the value conversation, you want to do what I call the 70-30 rule. The 70-30 rule means that your potential client is talking 70% of the time and you're talking only 30% of the time. Mm. This means that you are keenly listening to their answers to your questions. So the value conversation has you ask great questions and then they're talking about 70% of the time to actually answer your questions and you're talking only about 30% of the time. So that is what I call the value conversation. And I would say if this is something new, what you want to do is you practice this with new clients that are coming to speak with you about having these value conversations and getting used to asking questions instead of doing most of the talking. Hmm. And the next thing is from the value conversation, you realize this, if you, from the value conversation, you're thinking about a couple of things. Is this someone that you want to work with? Can you solve their problem? And do you want to make an offer for them to be able to move forward and work with you? If you answer yes to all three of those questions, then you talk about your programs and your packages and what it would be like to work with you. And you ask them to really make a decision on which way that they'd like to move forward. However, if you find by having that value consultation with them that this isn't really an ideal client, you're kind of getting some red flags that this isn't someone that you ought to work with or something feels a little bit off. Mm. Or possibly they're telling you about their problem, but it's not one that you're very interested in solving and it's not something that you really want to solve. You don't want to do that type of work. If that's the case, you don't have to make them an offer to work with you and discuss your service. All you have to do is kind of thank them and let them move on to find that po person who's a better fit for helping them. So recognize that a value conversation is not just them figuring out if they want to work with you, but you are also figuring out if they're an ideal client that you do want to work with, if you can solve their problem, if it even interests you, and then to ask them whether they want to take that next step with you. So you have to ask them if they want to work with you in order for them to be able to move forward and get started. And it's not a long, painful, drawn out process. You can do this all in one conversation if you have your system and your strategy on how this works and the, the way that it flows all laid out. Um, and an example is just yesterday, someone had reached out to me a couple days ago. We set up a conversation. We had the conversation yesterday, a value conversation, just like I was explaining to you here. Uh, I decided that I would like to work with this problem. I absolutely can solve the challenges that she's facing. And we got to the point of discussing the packages. We discussed that. I asked her which one she was interested in. We talked about the options a little bit more. And I asked her how she would like to get started. She told me how she would like to pay for services. She paid for them actually right then and there in full on the call. And she's now an enrolled new client and she's already gotten started with me. We hmm. are good to go at this point. Nice. So it can be that fast even if you offer a high ticket item, which this was for her because she enrolled into my private mastermind and business coaching program. But even if it's mm -hmm. a high ticket uh, price that you're offering, if you have it set up this way, we coming from a place of value and it's really about serving the client first, then it's not a long, painful, drawn out process. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's true with Gwen also. Um, with Gwen, she had been working for other people her entire career. In fact, she is a brand image consultant who has experience having worked on Madison Avenue in Manhattan, New York. She mm -hmm. moved to Oregon to be closer to her family and to have a different uh, quality of life for her family. And after a while of working for a large hospital there, she found that she was suddenly out of a job because she had two children at home to take care of, 
she started to move into being having her own business, but she's never had her own business before. And there were some things that were really literally freaking her out. She had a lot of anxiety about it. She knew how she could help her clients, but she just didn't know the business side of things to be able to make it work for her as well as for mm -hmm. them. Another client introduced us. We had a consultation and she immediately signed on to one of my highest packages and we got moving on this right away. I taught her exactly what I showed you and exactly what I did yesterday with my client. And just yes, uh, just earlier this week, actually, she posted in one of my private Facebook groups that she already hid $15,000 for the month of January, 2020. Mm. She still wow. has two weeks left in this month. Mm -hmm. So she is doing exactly what I'm talking about here and teaching here the exact same steps. And it has made a difference, not only for her, but for her kids as well, being able to take care of them as a single mom with confidence. And mm -hmm. she's also serving her clients at a higher level than when she first started out. Wow. That's amazing. I'm really super excited about that. So Lauren, before we, uh, we get into the final section, which I'm really looking forward to, especially about the objections, um, where you're going to talk about value pricing even further, I know that you've put something together that really fixes this issue. Would you tell us what you have created for them? Uh, absolutely. And if you have that link, can you go ahead and put it in the chat as well? Absolutely. Because some I people will. might be more visual and they can just click on the link and follow me there. Yep. I will do that right now. And basically, I wanted to just share about, you know, if this is something that's really resonating with you, you feel like you're ready to get this done and put this into place because you want 2020 to be a highly profitable year for you as well, then I would say go with me over to businesssuccesssolution.com forward slash value pricing. And there it talks about um, the, the ultimate pricing bootcamp. Uh, the ultimate pricing bootcamp is where I'm going to show you exactly what I've been just talking about and teaching you. We're going to just get it done. You're not going to have to take extra time to put it to do it on your own. You're gonna be able to put all these things in place. Basically, we're gonna focus on positioning your service as the ideal ultimate solution for your ideal clients. And, and really understanding who your ideal client is, connecting with what their needs, wants, and desires are so that when you're talking with them, it's like you're speaking their love language and they naturally ask, how do we move forward with this? Mm -hmm. The second part of the course is going to look at defining your signature system. Now, you probably have a system, but if you can't articulate it, then it's hard for potential clients to recognize that you actually have a process or method of helping them to achieve that result. The reason that you want a signature system is because all the experts that we follow and we look up to, they all have signature systems. And just, this now just puts you automatically in that classification of expert positioning. Because mm -hmm. you have your own system, this starts to separate you from other people that might be able to solve the problem that you solve as well by being able to focus on your own system as opposed to the fact, well, we just do this. I can't really explain to you how we do it, but we do with this. And, um, mm -hmm. th this is, and we just have to start working together. So, so now you can actually articulate the steps of how you help them go ahead and get it done. Just like I'm sharing my steps with you to this pricing boot camp. It takes it from abstract into something tangible, concrete that you can actually picture in your mind and conceptualize. Hmm. The third part, which is one of my favorite things, is unchaining you from charging by the hour. But this is going to, it is the fastest way to be able to increase your income without more cost to your business or taking more of your time away from other things that are really important to you. Pricing your services of value immediately boosts your income. It is a game changer. Because you're now focusing on value instead of charging by the hour, you have more confidence. You show up to the game differently. 
you're able to take a stand for your clients until they can take a stand for themselves. And that's what happens when you start to unleash your time and from your um, value. We are focusing on your expertise and your clients mm -hmm. are investing in you because of what you know, not how long it's going to take or what you do to help them solve that problem. So unchaining yourself from time is a game changer. I know that as we go through this process, there's a lot of questions that come up because most of us have some type of stuff around money. You have fears, you have worries, you have anxieties. Well, we need to be able to work through those things in order for you to really own your price and the value that you bring to the table and to get paid what you're worth. It might be that you worry that you don't wanna be seen as greedy or possibly how can you charge this much when nobody else that's doing the same thing charges this rate? Maybe you're looking at charging a rate that's higher than what your mentor even charges. And how could you possibly do that? We get to work through all those things. Oh, and the biggest one is, I'm afraid I'm going to lose clients if I raise my fees because my clients can't even afford to pay me now. Well, we get to unpack that one too so that that's no longer an issue because just yesterday I was talking with one of my clients who's a CPA about the rates for his taxes and that he knows that he undercharges. And we talked about the fact that even if we raised his fees by 10%, he's likely to lose maybe a couple of his clients. And those are the ones that were most price sensitive anyway, that he hadn't been giving a, an increase to for years. And even if he lost those clients, he would still make an additional seven to $10,000 during tax season. Then mm -hmm. by raising his fees 10% than if we didn't touch them at all. Mm -hmm. Well, Plus, he would have less overhead because if he lost a couple clients, he wouldn't have as high a payroll. So he might make seven to $10,000 more profit, but also he would be having lower payroll expenses. And that would actually add to his bottom line as well for tax season. Hmm. Wow. So the fifth part is to up-level your worth and once again, price yourself for value rather than time. So Going back to that third step, that's where we start to bundle your services. We're going to focus on packaging things together so that it's not about how much time. And then in the fifth step, we are going to start to look at how to value price those packages in order to really get paid what you're worth. So I'm going to let you know it's a five-week boot camp. It starts February 4th. Because I know that you're busy working in your business, this is setting out time on your calendar each week for five weeks to work on your business and get these things you've been thinking about done. During these uh, group coaching calls, we're going to go ahead and have some teaching from me. I'm going to answer all your questions you have about the mm -hmm. topic or what's coming up for you. And then we're going to roll up our sleeves and actually get it done. So it's not like I'm going to give you a bunch of information. Then you have, at, have to carve out even more time on your calendar to be able to do the work. We're just going to get the work done during this time together that's already blocked out. It is a time to work in your business and advance it to the next level. As some of you may know, I do high ticket services for my business coaching. My clients happily invest $10,000 or more working with me to be able to get this done. Mm -hmm. And I recognize that I talk to a lot of people that just can't afford that level of investment yet. And I don't want to leave those people behind. My mission this year is to really help more entrepreneurs be able to get paid what they're worth because I believe that entrepreneurs are the backbone of our economy. Mm -hmm. As entrepreneurs become more profitable, have a more successful business and are helping more people, they are naturally giving back to their community in direct as well as indirect ways. Basically, as I'm lifting up the ladder myself, I'm taking my clients up the ladder with me. And as you take your clients up the ladder with you, it is just this wave of positivity. We are just spreading good 
where we're all more capable of helping someone else in some way, either directly or indirectly. And, and that's why I'm offering the five week ultimate pricing bootcamp is because I really want you to have access to that information of being able to finally separate your fees from time so that you can have a more profitable business and be able to make a bigger impact on the people that you serve without having to sacrifice other parts of your life. So if, and I fully believe that if you enroll, if you show up, if you ask questions and you engage and you do the work and you already have clients, you're gonna be able to recoup the investment into this program before the five weeks are even over. It is normally a $2,000 bootcamp. Um, during this promotion between now and when the bootcamp gets started on February 4th, it's a $1,000 investment. And a bonus that I'm adding in is that the first 10 people who register will also receive a half hour private coaching session with me where I will go ahead and review your packages. I'll help you with your pricing. I'm gonna let you know some key things that you might have left out of your packages that actually make them even more valuable and how to be able to articulate that to your potential clients. And a private coaching session like that with me, um, well, I don't even offer one-on-one -on -one private coaching sessions actually. <laughs> uh, but mm -hmm. if I were, that has a $500 value. And the first 10 people to register into the Ultimate Pricing Bootcamp, which is at businesssuccesssolution.com forward slash pricing, get that bonus in as part of the Ultimate Bootcamp um, program that we're doing, Pricing Bootcamp, for their $1,000 investment. So the first 10 people mm. get that private coaching session with me. It has a $500 value. And the last thing is I am so convinced of the power of this work and how it transforms your business, making it more profitable, giving you back your precious time, that if after the first two modules, you're not satisfied with the information and you don't feel that it's a fit for you, let my team know and we will gladly re-credit uh, back, we'll give you back your investment, no questions asked. And you can mm. keep whatever work you did from those first two modules. So I'm so confident in the transformation and what's possible for you and your business from this, that you can make the investment, try out the first two modules at my risk. And if immediately after the second module, you know that this isn't a fit for you, let us know and we will happily refund your entire investment, no questions asked. So Steve, mm. that's the ultimate pricing bootcamp. I know wow. that you have the link um, businesssuccesssolution.com forward slash mm -hmm. pricing in the chat. In the chat, yep, mm -hmm. yeah. And, and I know that I already have some people that have already signed on. So uh -huh. uh, if you feel that this is you and you wanna grab one of those 10 bonus slots, I suggest that you take action, quick action, Stop thinking about it, get it done because you're, we're putting all the risk on me anyway. Mm -hmm. If you find it's not a fit, we'll refund your money. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's really amazing. I mean, it just really gets it done. And because your new clients are gonna be paying for value rather than time, basically the program pays for itself. And then just getting a half hour with you is really amazing. I know that I have a hard time doing that with you anyway, but <laughs> just getting a half hour with you is just, is just really great. So now you're going to talk about the five steps to the value pricing and talk about the objections, which I'm really excited about. Thanks, Steve. I, I so appreciate that. Uh, and the very first thing is mindset. You have to once again connect with the value of what you have to offer. You have to be ready to take action and do something that might feel uncomfortable at first. Mm -hmm. You have to give yourself permission. And if you don't know how to do it, then find someone to help you move forward with this and help you get it done. You don't have to do this on your own. You can partner up with someone who's able to help you solve these problems that you have and move forward. So mindset is the very first thing, um, is connecting with your worth and really understanding that you wanna be able to do this in a way that feels genuine and authentic for you. And, and that is exactly what happened with Kelly, is Kelly is 
well known and respected in her community. She has been, her family has been a high value, high wealth family in her community for many generations. And because that she was always concerned about what people thought about her because she's a very strong woman that has a lot of very firm beliefs, but she didn't want to do anything that would be contrarian or cause pushback. And because of that, she held herself back in many, many different ways. But basically, she is on a platform where she wants to help people get healthier by eating really good, wholesome food and really getting away from packaged, processed, and the quick, easy conveniences out there that don't really deliver a lot of nutrition. So what happened with her is that she really wouldn't say what she truly believed. If she was looking at putting a blog post on her website, she would take eight hours to go over it again and, and again and again, continuing to fine tune it to make sure that she wouldn't say anything that might offend someone or might have someone maybe leave a negative contact, comment on it. She, she was really, really fearful of that. And what we did is we began to shift away from being a perfectionist to focusing on excellence and really coming from the place of being a trusted advisor and doing what's in the best interest of her clients instead of what was in her own best interest. And by being able to do that, she was able to take a stronger stand for her clients she put her information out there proudly now, even though she might have been still anxious when she pressed the send button. And as a result of that, her message actually landed with the right people. She started getting a better response locally. That led to her getting speaking engagements. She started getting from those speaking engagements invitations to show up on different morning shows. And from there, she eventually received the invitation to become a spokesperson for the American Heart Association. And that was something really near and dear to her heart, to her own heart for a variety of different reasons. But really becoming a spokesperson for the American Heart Association let her get her message out there in even a more impactful way because now she had the a AHA backing her up. And it made such an amazing difference in her business and in her confidence and touching people's lives, helping them get healthier in a way that she never could have before when she shied away from maybe stepping on people's toes. So you have to have the right mindset that you want to be uncomfortable and really play a bigger game than what you've been playing up until now in order to move forward because let's face it, it's uncomfortable. However, you have to be doing this. Mm -hmm. And the next thing you want to do if you're going to start to um, change how you do your pricing structures, eventually you have to communicate your new rates to your clients. That is one of the biggest obstacles that my clients face is how do you let your current clients know? And the first thing you want to do is send them an email or reach out to them and let them know somehow by email or a traditional letter, whatever you typically use for your means of communication, that your business model is changing. And when you give them this information, you want to focus on how this is going to benefit them and the value that they're going to get from this change in business structure, as opposed to why you're doing it, um, that focuses on your value and how it benefits you. So you want to give them uh, some type of communication that focuses on what, how this is going to serve them better. You're going to be able to help them at a higher level. You'll be more available. But how this really benefits them as opposed to why it's benefiting you. The next thing is you want to then schedule a conversation with your current clients about the change in structure. You want to get an appointment on the calendar and depending on how your business is set up, you either meet with them virtually or you meet with them in person. You have, as I talked about before, a value conversation where you're focusing on identifying their needs, their wants, and their desires, and how you're going to help them solve those problems this coming year. And then you're going to 
talk about the different ways that you can work with them by sharing your packages and asking and helping them decide which one is the best one for them and answer their questions about that. Uh, when you do this, you want to take the role of being a trusted advisor, which means that you want to focus on what's their best interest instead of what's in your best interest. And I will let you know that I, I learned this one the hard way. When I was new in my business, moving into having a value business and doing these value conversations, packages, pricing, Early on, I met with someone who I knew was an ideal client. We, we had a great conversation during the value conversation. And then it came to the part of asking. And when I got to this part, I was able to feel my energy switch. And I knew that this was the part where I was talking about the sales part and them giving me money to work with me. And I was a relatively new business. I could use more clients and I definitely could use the money because I had some upcoming bills to pay. And because my mind switched from focusing on what was in their best interest to starting to think about what would be in my best interest, mm. I could feel my energy change. The rapport that I, and trust, I had just spent so much time building up with this client. It just went away like that in a snap because I shifted away from what was in their best interest to what was in mine and they could feel it. I'm sure that my posture might have changed. Maybe my tone of voice changed in some way. It all of a sudden created a disconnect. And we went through the different options of working with me. And then this person said, so why are you interested in working with me? And being of integrity, I answered honestly, because I, I know that I can help you. I, I can see where you're fit and I could use a new client and I would love to be able to have you sign on with me. And it was at that moment that this person said, well, let me think about it and I'll get back with you. I, I was crushed because I knew that I had just killed my own offer. And I didn't know how to stop myself. And we scheduled a follow-up conversation, but leaving that conversation, I felt like I needed to go and take a cold shower because it just felt so out of integrity, having switched from focusing on them for so much to now focusing on me. Mm. And it was at that moment that I vowed I would never, ever let that happen again. And I was going to figure this out. And, and that's why I really dove in. I actually invested $18,000 in a high level business coach to figure this out because it was not something I ever, ever wanted to do again. And fortunately, this business coach had, I knew that she had the solution that I needed that I just couldn't see for myself. We figured it out. And actually within three months, I recouped my own investment of $18,000 of working with her and have continued wow. to have compounding interest on it since then because I integrate, integrated it into my business. But it was from that mistake that I made a vow to myself. I didn't ever, ever want to do that again. And really looking to be that trusted advisor to my clients, wanted to be able to focus on what was there in their best interest from the very beginning to the very end of the conversation and never ever shifting of what would be in my best interest. And what's in their best, best interest is sometimes talking them up to a high level package than what they think and being able to hold that space for them. And sometimes they're thinking about a higher level package and I'm talking them down to a lower one because I know that they don't need that much. Mm. So it's really doing what is in their best interest coming from a place of integrity and really serving the higher good. And it has made a game changer. And I believe that really position yourself as a trusted advisor and taking that stand for your clients. And sometimes the stand is, I don't think you're ready for this yet. And these are certain things I think you need to do first. And once you've done them, let's come back and have another conversation. That is going to be 
the thing that separates you from everybody else, mm -hmm. having a similar type of enrolling conversation. It's good business karma. And even if that person chooses not to sign on with you, you left knowing that the time was well spent and they gained value because they had this conversation with you. Mm -hmm. And that is what I want you to be offering your com potential clients when you have a value conversation is knowing that whether they signed on with you or not, you helped them make the decision that was in their best interest, not yours, and that they benefited from the conversation regardless of what step that they took. Mm -hmm. <sighs> so <laughs> let me just yeah. <laughs> correct my thoughts. Um, but when you are really doing this, like I said, you're coming from a place of having a value conversation. They gain insights into their process and what's really going on in their business that they wouldn't have had if they didn't have this value conversation with you. So it's not just about the metrics or the tangible things. It's also understanding why is this important to them? Why does it matter right now? And, and that's one of the why questions I learned from you, Steve, mm -hmm. uh, that you always ask your, your clients. Um, and, 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 you know, I'd like to hear from you, you know, what, what is that you ask them that really gets to the core value of the conversation? Well, I always ask the first question I always ask is why now? Why did you decide to make this decision to come in and meet with me? Um, what's happening that is, is pushing you in this direction? But when you ask them the, the why now question, it really makes them think about, you know, the reason that they're there. Um, and it always gives me lots and lots of information that I can use in the sessions with them. The, the other thing is that sometimes the first answer to that why now question is a very, very superficial one. Have you found that too? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to dig deep, just like you were saying, uh, you know, with the value conversation, you really have to kind of dig deep and, and kind of ask the question and ask the question. I mean, it's, it's like, you know, sometimes you have a conversation with a little kid and the kid will say, why? And you give them an answer and go, well, why? And you keep going deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And, and, it, and it's kind of like uh, peeling the onion. I know that it's a, it's a great big um, uh, kind of a metaphor in uh, the EFT, emotional freedom technique, is that one of the things that we do is we, we peel the onion and we get down to the layers and eventually you get down to the core of the onion and that's where the sweetness is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I appreciate you expanding on that. And, and, mm -hmm. and for people that are doing more business to business, they're like, well, I don't want to dig deep. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm selling uh, bookkeeping services mm -hmm. or right. I'm selling uh, maybe human resources or payroll services. And you, you really need to do this because mm -hmm. one of the things about sales is that people, you can't expect someone to invest in you until they know that you exist. They like you, which means that they trust you. Mm -hmm. They feel a connection to you. And once they have that connection to you where they have trust in you, then they're going to be more likely to make a significant investment with you. But you can't have that conversation without really, and, and expecting them to make a high level investment without really tapping into why this is important to them now. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Therefore, sometimes you want to think about asking the five whys. And it's not who, what, where, when, why, like you learned in school. You want to ask them why this is important five times. So they give you an answer and then you go dig it. So tell me why that's important. Okay, now tell me why that's important. Mm -hmm. And usually by the fifth one, you are not at a superficial level any longer. Right. You are really finding it out. Um, like mm -hmm. with someone that I recently signed on, we, we were having that why conversation, why now? And we got through the superficial parts. And what really came down to it is that she is giving up so much of her personal time to make more money. She's on the verge of burnout. Mm. She's not feeling passion for it any longer. And she has it on her calendar to go leave the States, live in New Zealand for two months and go sailing with her husband. So mm -hmm. we need to figure out how to make her business not only more profitable, but we have to figure out how to shift it from being an employee in her business to being the CEO of her business. Mm -hmm. where she is yeah. not doing the 
the day-to-day -day operations. And as we're transitioning her from being an employee to the CEO of her business, that means that she's separating from this, the day-to-day -day operations. It frees her up and she can actually then go with peace of mind to New Zealand for two months and sail with her husband. Mm. Wow. That sounds cool. And, and that was her why <laughs> as to why mm -hmm. she was ready to really do it now. Right. It, it wasn't all the other superficial stuff. Um, she, she really wants to have this experience and traveling with her husband is something that they deeply, deeply value together. Mm. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And then the sailing on the uh, sailboat is a whole other piece of it. So we could tie that into Hawaii. That was like, oh my gosh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Sign me up. I'm ready to go. I will let you know, once we connected to that, any objections that she had just went away. Mm. So that's how easy it is once you really connect with their core value. Uh-huh. Nice. And then once you're there, you really want to have that conversation with them where you are focusing with them on what's in their best interest as opposed to what's in your best interest. And if it looks like a fit, offer your packages, talk about how it works, ask for them to take that next step of enrolling now. Uh, some people need some time to think about that, and I understand that, but you want to make sure that you are answering all their questions about why they ought to take this next step. And this is where we get into Objections. Oh my gosh. Objections. The infamous objections. Yes. Okay. Here's the mistake most people make. They get to this part. Someone says, well, it was more expensive than I thought. I don't have the budget for that. I don't have the time for that. It's going to take more time than I thought. I can't calendar that right now. I need to talk to my partner and get back with you. Those are the top three objections mm -hmm. that come up is usually about money, time, or else there's someone else that they need to touch base with. Right. Now there's other objections that might come up that are specific to your industry. And you might want to know what those are, but I'm going to say become aware of the top five objections that you typically get. Mm -hmm. I gave you the top three right there. And when these come up, the mistake is most people think it's the end of the conversation. They shut down the conversation. They say, thank you very much. They shake hands and they let that potential client move out the door. Mm. Yeah. The problem with that is these people, because of a value conversation with you, they became keenly aware of this need, their wants and their desires, even more so than before they had the conversation with you. Mm -hmm. They are now primed, ready to move. And as soon as the objection came up, you shut down the conversation. So now they're going to move on to the next person on their list. Go. That person's mm -hmm. going to ask them to work with them and be able to sit with them through the objections. And that person's going to have an easy yes because you primed them and you just didn't know how to deal with it when the objections came up. Right, right. Isn't wow. it a good thing or bad thing or anything for you to feel guilty, shame about? It's just that you don't know how to deal with objections mm -hmm. because we are a society that has been trained to say no first when faced with an uncomfortable decision. Mm. How true. How true. Yeah. And when someone gives you an objection, it means that they need more information, they still have questions, and they don't fully see the value yet of what you have to offer. Mm -hmm. And until they say, absolutely, no, I'm not interested. If they say to you, no, I'm not interested, then you, know, you might wanna ask them why to get some insights about it. And it might be that they just don't see the full value yet and they have some questions. Or it might be that they really don't see you as a fit. And at that point, let them go and move on. You, they're saving you time and you're saving them time from um, trying to convince someone or, to, or enrolling someone who's not an ideal client. Let them move on. But if they have objections and they say something about money, time, I need to talk with my partner, something like that, then 
you want to keep the conversation going. And this mm -hmm. is the most important part of the conversation, actually, because if you can help them get past this hurdle, then they're in and you get to help them solve their problem. This is like the hardest part of them working with you is just helping them over this hurdle to say yes. Mm -hmm. So you want to be able to figure out how you would like to respond when these objections come up. Mm -hmm. What I encourage is you want to get curious. If they say that, well, it's more than I expected. I don't have the time. I need to talk to my partner or whatever else it is. You, you're like, well, why don't you tell me more? What, what, what are some of the things that are, you know, holding you back from moving forward right now? They, they will share that with you. They'll gladly tell you that. And, and then take the time to really talk to them about it and see if it's really a valid objection where they really, really can't do it right now or if they're just trying to postpone moving forward because it's uncomfortable mm -hmm. or they need more information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, and this is where feeling comfortable asking about those whys. You know, why does this matter? Why is this important? What's going on that's causing you to hold off right now? Where do you need more information? If you start to really find that out, you'll be able to work through those different objections one by one. And then that increases the possibility that they are going to actually say yes. And you, and then you want to ask them again, okay, now that we've answered all these questions, do you have any more left? At some point they'll say no. And then say, okay, which package are you interested in? Mm -hmm. They'll reaffirm which one and how would you like to invest in that? And at that moment, they're more likely to actually take action with a yes and make that investment with you to move forward. And you should sign on this really amazing, great new client that otherwise would have been walking out the door. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is so true. The, the other thing about objections that I see is that if they're having the objections or if they're coming up with the conversation, it means that they're interested. Because I think a lot of people, when they hear the objection, just like you were saying, they figure, oh, you know, this is not going to work and the sale is over kind of thing. But I actually look at the objection as they're really interested. All you need to do is convince them and show them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I put in the chat, I'd love to hear what you think objections come up most often for you mm -hmm. or that you face. Um, maybe there's okay. one that I didn't say. Right. Right. Good. And if there were any other questions about objections or anything like that, um, would love to be able to um, take a couple minutes to see if we can answer those questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And Steve, anything that you feel that I need to touch on while we're seeing um, if any other questions might be coming up? Um, no, I mean, you, you have just shared so much that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really just kind of sitting on the edge of my seat listening. <laughs> I so appreciate you. <laughs> so I, I know that there are, you know, quite a few people here. They've been hanging in with us this whole time. I so appreciate that. If there's any other questions about what we touched, would love to be able to answer one or two of those. Um, in the meantime, I would say really get comfortable with having a value business, focusing on connecting with your value, being able to start to separate your fees from your time and your costs mm -hmm. involved looking at how to have a value conversation instead of a pitch and knowing that at some point you are going to have to deal with objections and how do you keep the door open from the point of being a trusted advisor where you're taking that stand for your client until they can take a stand for themselves, being able to work through those barriers that they're facing to let them move forward and finally have the results that they've been seeking. Mm -hmm. So, those Lauren, we did have we yeah. did have somebody say they're not that the the uh, objections are not frequent, but price is usually the issue, and especially if they talk about the hourly rate. Uh, okay, great. Um, oh, that is something that I want to just real quickly answer about the hourly rate. Is mm -hmm. I believe that it is unfair to you, and it's unfair to your clients. Mm -hmm. The reason that it is unfair on both sides of the table is that 
your clients want to pay the lowest fee possible, which means that they want you to get the work done as quickly as possible. Oh, okay. Uh, I will go through the five steps again the, in a moment. The fifth step. Yeah. 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 Okay. I, I think I got so caught up with everything. I don't know what I missed. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but okay. I'll, I'll go through that again in a moment. But um, I'll, I want to say that they want it to be done for as minimal price as possible. So they want you to work quickly. Mm -hmm. And as and for you, in order to make more money, you, you want to actually take more time with it. So this puts you at odds with you and your client because they want it done faster. You want to take a little bit more time because they want to be cheap and you want to make more money. The other reason that it's not fair to you is that pricing by the hour reinforces inefficiency on your side. You're not encouraged to get faster or be more effective mm -hmm. because the more effective you are, the more efficient you are, the less time it takes, which means that you make less money as you get better than when you first started out. Mm -hmm. Pricing by the hour diminishes what you bring to the table as far as your expertise. So as you have more insights, you gain more knowledge, you make less money than when someone who is first figuring out has to take longer because they just don't know some things that you do. So that's why I believe that charging by the hour is unfair to you or your clients. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the good, thing that you want to look... Yeah, the thing that you want to look at from the uh, five steps is you want to uh, have the mindset to be able to connect with your value. You want to know how to communicate it. You want to schedule a conversation with your potential clients. And then you want to have that value conversation with your clients. You want to be able to discuss the different options with them. And you want to get ready for objections. So that might be one, two, three, four, five. I think I just gave six steps because the objections are part of the value conversation, mm -hmm. but um, they're such an important part that they really need to be pulled out. And um, I just wanted to quickly share about Car Carolina is, she was someone who's always worked in the public sector in the healthcare industry and in clinics. And when we met, um, she was still working in the, public se sector, but she was developing a side hustle on wanting to help minorities get into leadership positions. Mm -hmm. She believed because she was working around a lot of doctors and people with advanced degrees, that for her to be able to do this side hustle and turn it into a consulting service, she would have to actually go back to school and get a PhD. Mm -hmm. Well, a PhD meant devoting several years of study as well as being saddled with then um, uh, having to pay back her student loans for many years afterwards, it was being saddled, it would delay her career for a couple years and she would end up with student loans once she graduated. I explained to her that she could actually start doing the work now without needing these advanced degrees. And she had some objections about that because she was, she was working around clinics with, do, with doctors with advanced degrees. They were the highest paid ones in the clinic. And how could she, without this advanced degree, do this type of work? Um, so we talked about that. She was able to see the possibility that she could get, sooner, get started sooner without the degree. And that, that meant that she would be able to help some of these minorities step into leadership position sooner than if she waited until she did it the, the traditional way. We got started once again, we went through this whole process of identifying which minorities were her ideal clients. She, since she was an immigrant that came from Mexico over to the States and had done very well for herself, she, she really wanted to start with uh, people from her country. Uh, so she started with the Hispanic population. Mm -hmm. And then we started to structure her business where she was able to offer packages and we priced them for value. She started getting in front of her Hispanic community and her where she lived and started connecting with these people about what she was able to offer, how she could help them because so many of them had their own businesses also, but they had small mom and pop businesses. Uh, and, and that they were 
in their own small community, but some of them held back because they only spoke Spanish, even though they were still living in the United States, and didn't feel that they could maybe integrate into the more Anglo English speaking sector of the community. Mm -hmm. And it was affecting mm -hmm. their businesses and their prosperity. Mm -hmm. So yeah. he was able to really tune into them, start offering packages, start helping them with gaining um, confidence and their leadership skills. And she was able to do this without having to go back to school and devote a couple more years and then have the um, tuition fees as a financial burden out of the gate as she started her new business. So she now has evolved international. She's making a difference. She's been doing this for several years now. And it is someone mm. who's gone from always being a servant in the public sector into the private sector where she's been able to really expand her impact and her influence. So mm. that is pretty much all that I have to give, Steve. Wow, you covered so much today. Um, so you covered the number one pricing mistake. You talked about how to value price your services and you went into the five steps for value pricing and actually added a sixth step, which is about objections. And I know that you also have more for the listeners. So what else do you have for them at this point? Well, I'm going to say if this is something that really resonated with you, you are ready to move in this direction. You are just waiting to get started mm -hmm. because you have been wanting to really make more money without having to sacrifice your personal life, then I'm going to just say, join the ultimate pricing bootcamp. We already have some people registering, mm -hmm. uh, go ahead and invest in yourself for the 997. If you're one of the first 10 people still, and we have some slots remaining, then um, you will get that private coaching session with me, but this is your time to increase your impact, increase your influence, and take people up the ladder with you. Mm -hmm. It makes a difference in your life. It makes a difference in the lives of your clients. You show up from a bigger place than you did up until now when you were trading dollars for hours and trying to compete with everybody else. You're really showing up as someone who owns what you have to offer and you're able to take a stand for your clients until they can take a stand for them. You're solving their problems and you're helping them to move forward with their transformation. Once again, if this resonates with you, go ahead and make the investment. Uh, once again, I offer that uh, happiness satisfaction guarantee. Go through the first two modules. If after the end of the second module, you're not satisfied, I will refund your money, no questions asked. So once again, invest in yourself because when you invest in yourself, you are going to show up in a bigger way and you're going to take other people up the ladder with him. It just is uh, this wave of positivity. So it's businesssuccesssolution.com forward slash pricing. Thank you so much. Make this your year. Goodbye. Take care.